I think we're all capable of far more than we think we are. My name is Ros Savage. I'm a British ocean rower. I am the first woman to have rowed solo across three oceans, the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans. But I used to be a normal person. I was a management consultant for 11 years before this rather radical career change. I guess the first choice that I didn't get the opportunity to make was who I got born to. And my parents were both Methodist preachers. And maybe that sowed the seeds for this feeling that life should have some sort of purpose and meaning that's about more than money. And I was in denial about that for a long time. Um, as a reaction against that, I was very materialistic as a young adult. Graduated from Oxford University in 1989, went straight into the city as a management consultant. It was that kind of era when greed was good and lunch was for wimps. And um, I thought that was what I wanted. I thought that made me happy. What really brought it home to me that maybe I wasn't on the right path. And I am a bit slow on the uptake. 11 years after starting Woods Management Consultant, I wrote two versions of my own obituary. I imagine that I was at the end of my life and looking back and examining the way that I'd spent my time on this earth. So the first version was the one that I wanted, and the second one was the one that I was heading for. And to really oversimplify, I guess what I wanted was a life of meaning and adventure and personal challenge. What I was heading for was the life of quiet desperation, secure, but at the same time being stifled by that security. A tough decision I took then was not to act on that because I was terrified, or maybe that was the easier decision. The harder decision was to actually follow my heart and give up everything that had represented security to me, which... Um, over the course of a three or four years, entailed leaving my job, hence my salary. Um, then, pains me to say this, but um, my marriage ended, um, which meant I also left my home. Um, so at this point, I had pretty much nothing that most people represent security. Um, and it was in that fertile void of uncertainty that I decided that I would row across oceans to raise environmental awareness. I think there is a growing awareness that the things that we used to think back in the 20th century represented um, security and happiness. In fact, increasingly we're seeing that they don't represent security and happiness. We used to think that having a home gave us that kind of security. Um, many people think having a, a relationship or a marriage will give them security, that having a job will give them security, but all of these things more and more are not secure. And actually becoming secure with insecurity is probably the best security that you can have. It's a really formative time right now where we're seeing that some of the old systems, the old securities are letting us down. They're crumbling and people are finding ways around it. I experienced this for myself as well. Like when I was planning my ocean voyages, at the start of each expedition, I would come up with my spreadsheet. The management consultant in me would come up with the Excel spreadsheet of all of the, the costs and how much they would be and how much sponsorship I needed to raise. And I can absolutely tell you, I never saw that sum of money in my bank account. But people would show up with their skills, with their time, with their energy. People would take my shopping list away from me and just deal with it, people lent me their houses, their cars. There is something about allowing yourself to be vulnerable, going out there and trying to do something for a higher purpose that just creates this sort of vortex that people just want a part of it. It's the most amazing and uplifting and heartwarming thing. One of the biggest perks of my job was that I really saw the, the best side of human nature. In these time, these very rapidly changing times, we need a different style of leader. It's not going to be the directive leader who tells people just to do things because they want it done. It's going to be more the collaborative leader, the empathetic leader. Um, I was just listening earlier today to a talk by Daniel Pink in which he says that actually once somebody feels like they are earning enough for their work, 
above that level of basic respectable pay. They will be so much more motivated by autonomy and mastery and purpose than they are by the cash bonus. And I think if we could bring the humanity, the respect and the, the teamwork uh, back into the workplace uh, in a way that's sometimes been lost in these super massive corporations, I think we need to harness everybody's skills and everybody's talents in these times when the world's got so complex that no boss or CEO can, can hold all of that in their heads. They need to respect and engage and, and draw out the best from every single person in their workforce. The word that sprang to mind as you were asking that question was humility. Um, it's actually putting ego to one side and recognising that maybe we can do things better in collaboration than we can do um, by acting completely <laughs> as in a I'm, I'm going to be the boss kind of situation. Dare I even say it, it might be a more feminine style of leadership where the goal is to get the job done in the best and most effective way rather than to be seen to achieve the goal. I've spoken with people in certain companies who have so many great ideas, but because they feel that their way of doing things might be at odds with their corporate culture, they don't dare to speak up. And I feel that's a tragedy because that person is them being less than they could be. And their superiors are getting less value out of them than they could do if they were allowed to really be themselves. I think we're all capable of far more than we think we are. When I look back at the management consultant that I was, I was so constrained by my own lack of self-confidence, by these self-imposed um, restrictions about what I can and can't do, what I should and shouldn't do, what I must and mustn't do. And when I took those tough decisions and pretty much <laughs> disappointed everybody, I embraced failure in a big way. I was able to let go of um, my fear of failure and fear of what other people think of me, which was so liberating. And it was only when I'd done that that I really found out what I could be capable of um, and let go of all those self-limiting beliefs. And I think a crucial part of that was that I was massively motivated by this environmental epiphany that I'd had in the meantime. Having that higher purpose, something that was bigger than just me, really, really helped. I think when we find that kind of rich vein of motivation, we really can move mountains. It's amazing. Um, and I think in connection with that, when we're talking about long-term changes, I think we tend to overestimate what we can achieve in the short term. And believe me, my daily to-do list bears testament to that. It's always completely unrealistic. Um, but I think we always underestimate what we can achieve in the long term if we just work slowly and consistently towards those longer term goals. To kind of use a good seafaring analogy, it's like making those daily course corrections, whether, you know, whether that's your, your diet and exercise regime or whether that's um, all the way up to our sustainability challenges. The longer that you leave it without making those course corrections, without doing just something each day towards your goal, the harder it gets. As the saying goes, the way that we live our days is the way that we live our lives. And the way that we collectively, all seven, of course, a billion of us live our lives, will ultimately be the way that our species lives or doesn't live. And um, this is why one of my mantras has been that we all need to play our part. We're all responsible. We're all making a difference every single day by the way that we live our lives. Every time we buy something or throw something away or choose how to get from A to B, we are making a difference. And it's the accumulation of those tiny little differences that will determine our long-term future. Wow.